So y'all gotta speak to y'all children about sex and stop trying to hide things from them hoping that if you hide it from them they won't know about it. No, they're gonna go out there in the streets and find out from the wrong person when they should be finding out from you. So I'm not really going in verbatim like I said, I'm just giving my commentary about how I feel about the situation. I feel like people should be a little bit more careful with what they say because it, it was a lot of men and surprisingly it was a lot of black women too that were, oh sorry, that were literally being messy about this on social media. Like even in the shade room comments, like people were being very messy and trying to be funny. It's not a funny time because there's a point in time where you may have a daughter and you have to deal with older men taking advantage of them. You may have nieces, you may have cousins and different things that may have to deal with this because y'all want to sit up and think this shit is a joke when really it's girls in y'all family that may be possibly going through this or might go through this or probably have went through this. So to be insensitive and to, to try to be funny and, and be like, oh, R. Kelly didn't do it, they're lying, he's a legend, and all of this other stuff. I just feel like a lot of parents should have been more careful with their children. They should have been more involved in their children's lives. Like, a lot of these women were saying that they couldn't even speak to their family. Like, he would change their phone numbers. And he was in control of who called and who, who called for them, who they were able to talk to, who they weren't able to talk to. Listen, you ain't finna run my life like that. You know, they were young girls and that's why he, I felt like he gravitated more to younger girls because they were, you know, they were easier to control than an older woman. Like an older woman would be like, listen, I'm grown, I pay my own bills, you're not gonna tell me what to do. Especially a black one, that's why a lot of black men don't like black women because they are very, you know, they're strict and they don't take no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And they're very dominant. A lot of black men don't like black women because of that particular reason. They want to be worshipped, praised, and they want to be in control. And even you could hear the girls, they would be like, oh, he wanted us to call him daddy during sex. And first it started off just during sex, and then it's afterwards just calling him daddy, period. I feel like he had a fetish of being, of being like, I don't know, like, uh, girl, I, I just, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like he had a fetish of being in control and being very, feeling like a daddy, I guess. You know, like a pimp or something. Because he did give off like this little pimp persona with the fur jackets and the, the, the little canes or whatever and all that, like the crown. So he gave off a little bit of a pimp persona. So maybe that's how he wanted to feel. I don't know. But y'all, I was looking at the documentary and I was disturbed. I was disturbed. And I feel like us black men, we gotta speak up and be more protective over our women because black women are the one that's protecting us and taking risks for us and standing up and using their voices to make sure that we are protected and making sure that we are walking the safe, walking the streets and, and around the world safely. Like they're speaking up, they're being assertive for us. So for us as black men, why can't we be their protectors as well as their ours? You know what I'm saying? Why do we have to be quiet when a woman is going through something? And, and let's be honest, men go through the same thing with being molested and raped and everything like that. And people are silent about it because men feel like it's not cool to speak on it. Men feel like it's not going to, you know, people are not going to believe them or it's going to look, make them look a certain way, you know, whatever. I just personally feel like something got to be done. You feel what I'm saying? Something have to be done. And just like that uh, musical teacher said, you know, your sins is eventually going to catch up with you. You understand what I'm saying? But she was aware of some of the things that he was doing. And this is my thing. Like, y'all were aware of what he was doing, but nobody was trying to do anything. Or maybe they were. Maybe they were threatened. Maybe they were afraid. Maybe they were scared. They just didn't know what to say or what to do in that particular situation. Like, you know? I mean, hey, but that whole story with the, like, the Javante lady, like, she was spilling all the tea, okay? She was spilling everything, like, she was there. And then with the whole situation with Sparkle, she was saying how her parents were very strict. Like, they couldn't go spending the night to people's house who had boys. Um, they couldn't be left around boys for too long and stuff like that. And I feel like, I feel like every black woman and everybody was raised like that, but a lot of people tend to... 
I don't know, go against the way they were raised or maybe go against what they were taught. I, I don't know. I feel like all of us were raised like that. Like, we couldn't go around. Like me, my mom never let me spend a night at people's house, like, ever. Like, I may have spent a night to, like, my grandma's house or I may have spent the night to a cousin house but it was just strictly boys or maybe it was one girl that was a cousin but that was it you know but I wasn't around to I wasn't able to go spend a night to people's house if people was not able to come and just spend a night to my house like if girls are involved like people be like oh could you babysit my baby till I you know I gotta go to work more I'm like you got girls no because ain't no girls over here ain't no girl stuff over here it ain't nothing for them to do ain't nothing but men and boys over here so no so I feel like a lot of people were, were taught that, but you know. We don't always turn out the way our parents want us to be, right? But uh, yeah, so she was saying how her niece was a rapper. She was in this group called For The Cause. And um, she was a great rapper and everything. And Sparkle started dealing with the, the, the Javante lady say uh, Sparkle was there from the beginning. She saw, she knew everything. She was there from the beginning. She introduced her niece to R. Kelly in hopes that he was going to help her career and everything because she was a great rapper. So she was hoping that he was going to help her, you know, get to the top, be a superstar like every young girl and young boy dream to be. She say after a while, you know, the niece would be in the studio by herself. She would be dropped off to the studio and be sitting in there by herself and everything. She was like, you know, R. Kelly, the niece would tell her, you know, R. Kelly is having a Christmas party. There's going to be a lot of kids there. So she's going. And I'm like, okay, where's this little girl mama? Okay, where's her mama? Where her daddy at? Where's her aunt? Like, what, what is going on here? What is going on? Like, why is it okay? Like, why is this not being investigated all the way? So she was like, it started to feel a little bit weird and strange. She would be in the house and she would hear knocks at the door. And his wife, Andrea, would come down asking for permission to eat. And I'm like, what the fuck? You gotta ask permission to eat. You gotta ask permission to piss. You gotta ask permission to shit. You gotta ask, what, what the fuck? That's prison. Who wants that? You know, who wants that? But they were mind fucked and controlled, so it's not their fault. You know, you're never, I, I, that whole victim thing, you're never a victim. I, that's what I believe, you know? There's a lesson in every situation and you learn. And I'm glad that these women are speaking out because now women are aware of the type of person he is. Some women will be okay with this situation and, and, and allow this man to treat them this way or allow themselves to be treated this way. Some women will be more aware. Stop allowing these men to have control over your daughter thinking that oh they're going to be celebrities because they can sing or they can rap. These men ain't interested in, in, in nothing dealing with them. Only thing they're interested in is making money off them, using them as their sex objects, and that's it. That's it. I'm glad, like, I don't want to talk about this too long because I really don't like talking about it. It makes me very uncomfortable because I have little girls in my family that I'm very protective over. And I don't like, just to think about it, I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. And me wanting to have kids later on in life, I just, it just makes me feel like, damn, do I really want to bring kids into this world with people like this? Who have this mindset, who have this this way of thinking like he was always hanging around high school kids I and mean, this is a grown-ass man he done got out of high school he dropped out of high school a long time ago and he's hanging around high school kids so it's like it's a lot of people around that are going through this but they don't really speak on it and I feel like like a lot of people now are like oh now you want to come out about the situation why you didn't just go to the police because they didn't have the the, the time the, the 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 environment was not open for them Every, it wasn't open for them to speak on these things. They had to be quiet because they wanted to be stars. They wanted to feed their fucking family. They wanted to take care of their family. They were in poverty and they wanted to get out of it. So they did what they had to do thinking that it was going to help them and it didn't. So stop. Y'all have to stop. In 2019 and so on, y'all got to stop with that. Oh, why now? Better now than never. These people were living in the projects. He was living in the projects. He knew how rough it was. And even his brother that's in jail, Bruce, was speaking and saying how, oh, preferences is just preferences. And that's a whole nother goddamn story because y'all with this whole preference thing don't realize how problematic your preferences can be. I don't feel like that's a preference. That's just disgusting. That's just nasty. That's just low down. Okay? You are... You... You are... 
you're R. Kelly. You are R. Kelly. Okay? You're a legend. You're an icon. There are women out there who can would just literally be happy to throw pussy at you in any given moment. You don't need a child. What's, what is the, the, the enthusiasm into, and I don't know if I said that word right, I probably did and I don't give a shit, but you get what I'm saying. What, what excitement do you get from messing with young girls knowing that this could possibly be your daughter, this, you know, you, you old enough to be this girl's biological father and you're literally having sex with them. And a lot of these women said that they never had sex before that R. Kelly was their first time. So therefore, that lets you know he was into virgins, into young girls. He knew he could manipulate them by telling them that they were going to be stars and they were going to be big and they were going to be somebody. Like, like even the story about the whole, the lady from, um, from here, Miami, uh, she, she was from, what was she from? Sunny Isles Beach. And I work in that area. So she was like, he came over, he was at, they was at Amateur Mall, and she saw him and she told her friend, oh my god, that's R. Kelly. R. Kelly came over, he turned around, spoke to her, he walked away and left, and the security gave her his, um, his number because he wanted her to call her, call him. So she say, her friend was like, bitch, you go get your hair done, we go get you together, because you know you're going to call him, this is your big break, you about to be big. And she was very pretty, still pretty, very beautiful woman. Um... But when you look at like older pictures of her, she kind of looked like a like a little Selena almost a little bit. So he was telling her like, oh, you know, I'm going to help you out and everything. She went to the studio. She say he would play uh, music on his piano and he started playing boys to men and was telling her to sing along. She started singing along. He said he liked her voice. She has potential. He's going to help her out. The next thing you know, he started kissing her in the mouth and she was like, you know, it didn't feel right, but she continued to do it. She didn't want to tell him no, so she continued to let him kiss on her and everything and they started having sex. Next thing you know, he's telling her to call him daddy during sex and he telling her he, she can only address him as daddy. He can't speak to this, she can't speak to this person, that person. She would be locked in this uh, room, hotel room or whatever, and he told her, you know, if you leave, my boys are following you, they know everything you're doing. So she would be locked in his room for long periods of time, can't speak to her mom or her family. She said there would be men in the back seat, like a lot of his boys and stuff would be in the back seat and he would make her do sexual things to humiliate her. He would beat her and make her do sexual things. She ended up getting pregnant, had a miscarriage and then voila, we get the most iconic song and I'm very pissed because it's one of my favorite R. Kelly songs. I mean, uh, Michael Jackson songs, You Are Not Alone. How the fuck am I going to be able to listen to these songs the fucking same? Like, I can't listen to uh, Michelle A. Something in my heart the same. All I can think about her is getting her ass beat before she started recording it. Like, now I gotta think about this woman uh, having a miscarriage and then this song came out. <laughs> like, I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like, I can't listen to these songs the same. The lady, uh, Miss Javante, she was saying how he would, uh, write songs about situations and different things that he was in and indulged in like the whole AJ nothing but a number song y'all I don't y'all and I'm so mad because that's one of my favorite Aaliyah songs and I'm like what the fuck like what the fuck okay like that's one of my favorite Aaliyah songs every time that song come on I'm doing the little you know what I'm saying the little that she used to do in the video and I'm like god damn like I can't even listen to that the same I can't listen to that album period the same like from now on, I'm not acknowledging that album. I only have to listen to one in a million and so on, but I can't even listen to it because it's not on any streaming services at all. So YouTube it is. <laughs> but you know, y'all, I just I just want to say this and I'm gone because I don't want to touch on this too much. Protect men, black men that are watching this, whether you're gay, straight, whatever. Black men who are watching this, we got to protect our women. We got to protect them. Because they're protecting us. We, I never understood how a black, a black man could dislike or have hatred for a black woman when they protect us, you know? And I never understood how a black woman could hate a black man when, you know, we protect them. And we don't, a lot of black men tend to fail black women a lot. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you, and it's, it's so crazy because you would think like, something like this would be very common but it's not the black woman that raised me protected me at all costs some things may have happened that she wasn't around and wasn't able to save me from or protect me from but 
she protected me the very best that she could, you know? So it's only right as me as a man to do the same. Protect your daughters, keep your eyes on them. Young girls that are watching, when your parents tell you something, listen, like I understand, cause my mama be telling me stuff still to this day and I'm 22 years old, about to be 23, this year. And my mom still talks to me and be like, no, don't do this because you know, blah, blah, blah. And I get frustrated and irritated sometimes too, but then later on, you think about it like, damn, you know, my mama did tell me not to do this. My mama did tell me that. My dad told me this. My dad told me that for this particular reason. I'm glad I listened or I should have listened. You know what I'm saying? Like, they experience more than us. They've gone through more than us, so they know what to look out for. So listen to your parents because things like this happens. And parents that are out there, you got to be open with your children. Be open with them. Stop hiding sexuality away from them. Stop hiding sex from them stop hiding these things from them because if they don't learn about it at home they're going to learn about it through people like our Kelly and you don't want that okay you don't want that teach them if you got to show them this documentary and other documentaries you got to tell them about things and explain stuff to them no matter how graphic or disgusting it is you got to be open with your children because if not they're going to live this life thinking that, oh, you know, not knowing much about sex, not knowing too much. And let's be honest, there are some young girls that are fast in the ass, okay? That's, as my mother would say, hot in the ass, okay? <laughs> okay, hot in the ass. You know, you got to teach your children this stuff because you don't want them learning it from people like R. Kelly or Chris Stokes. I'm just saying, okay? But, like, even to this day, where you have the internet and you have television and stuff like that, where... Back then, you had to pay for porn sites. You had to pay for porn. You had to pay to even, you had to subscribe to your cable company and pay a certain fee every month to even look at porn. And now it's easy, it's accessible. Kids are looking at it. Like I remember when I was in school, like there were people, you know, in school, they have the little block thing where you can't go on certain websites. There were kids that would literally download apps where you can take the block off where that way you could go on different websites and they would go on Pornhub and stuff like that. Like, girl, it's sick. So y'all gotta speak to y'all children about sex and stop trying to hide things from them hoping that if you hide it from them, they won't know about it. No, they're gonna go out there in the streets and find out from the wrong person when they should be finding out from you. So y'all gotta stop with this, oh, my child not old enough to know about sex and about transgenders and sexuality and this this and that and that no when they are able to wipe their own ass flush their own to <laughs> flush the toilet on their own you have to speak to them you have to talk to them get it through them explain to them you got to have that open conversation with them and that communication where they feel comfortable enough to say mom this happened mom you know this happened that happened or let them know what could possibly happen so they can know what to stay away from because a lot of these girls didn't know no better. They just thinking that he's going to give them a career and help them blow up. And they just ran with it, you know. They just sat there and took the beatings and took the humiliation and starvation and, and, and all these other things thinking that it was going to help them. You know, and a lot of these men were able to get away with these things back in the day because, you know, like I could just whoop your ass today and pay you to not say anything tomorrow because I don't want to disturb my reputation or my brand or my name I have to protect me so I'm gonna do what I gotta do to keep my name clear you know we live in a social media world where celebrities are more accessible these days you can find out things about them you can talk to people that's in their inner circle that was going you know that's going to tell you things and you can find out things about them that's all I got I love y'all so much thank you for watching make sure that you like comment and subscribe to my channel I truly appreciate you guys if you want more videos of me talking about stuff like this or being doing more serious topics just let me know and I got you guys um I mostly do reaction videos but I was like you know what I'm gonna do this video okay because I feel like it's important and um shout out to John Legend for actually doing a documentary a lot of black people a lot of big stars denied doing the interview for um for this documentary and I'm not surprised I'm not surprised <laughs> so I will see you guys in the next one peace and love love and light uh, love and light I hope you guys are having an amazing new year mine is going pretty good y'all because I just you know possibly get a, uh, uh, a new J-O-B, okay? So, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Born.
nigga, I be like, ooh, he love me, ooh, he love me, good for him. Come on. Come on.